Welcome to Sunrise Beach Park. This is personally one of my favorite dive sites. We are dropping down this anchor line, and by we, I mean these lovely volunteer scuba divers. Uh, I like noticing how that algae is really up on the top of that line, and as you go deeper and deeper, where there's less sunlight, it just starts to taper away. But myself, Stina Troyer, and Rachel here are gonna narrate this awesome dive for you today. So and I am super excited because this is a place that I have visited many times intertidally, but to see it underwater is just and fantastic. All these urchins. Wow! <laughs> Look at all those green urchins. Yeah, it's a pretty fantastic place. And so hopefully for those of you who are also non-divers, you get to enjoy kind of this live dive experience as if with, you were without there. Without getting wet. Yeah, no. Even better. Maybe you're out in the rain, so at least without getting salty. <laughs> so, wow. so those urchins are so cool. They're herbivores. They have five self-sharpening teeth, um, and they are predators on kelp and seaweed. So I'm noticing not a lot of seaweed in this mud flat, but that could also just be because it's mud flat. So true, good point. Uh, divers are going out. They're gonna. I'm seeing a lot of green urchins. So yeah, that's but rock. I mean, they like fun. that rocky habitat, so that makes sense yeah, that you would find urchins here's, there. Here's another echinoderm. This is the leather star. You can see that bright white spot is the madreporite because this is an animal with no blood, so they're actually filtering seawater into their body. And we have a couple of these in our touch tanks here at the Scanzi House. You can come by and visit and get what it feels like to touch an actual leather star. They feel quite leathery. Oh, oh this look! Is cool. A scallop! Oh my gosh, I love scallops. Not to eat, surprisingly, although that is a very popular thing. A lot of people love to eat scallops, but I just think their, their shells are so beautiful, pretty pink and kind of Got these great striations on them. Oh, hey, fishy. Nice rockfish. Lead us to your dive buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm seeing lots of green urchins, lots of scallops. A little bit of shell debris. Oh, hey, a nice cucumber. Sea cuke. Another echinoderm. That urchin and that cucumber are related, though distantly. Um, they both have tube feet. They both use water pressure to power those tube feet. No bones. Spiny skin. And they do have radial symmetry. It's just lengthwise instead of like a pie. Wow, those scallops are just, just so cool. I, I'm so like excited about scallops. Yeah. Nice red algae too, covering those rocks. Yeah. Some encrusting and oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. That's a cool find. <gasps> a wolf eel. Okay, so wolf eels are one of the few animals that can eat urchins. They have these great huge molar teeth in their back of uh, their jaw that they can just crunch up those hard shelled animals. <laughs> a little shy today, but uh, <laughs> buddy, you are in the right place for a good, good job in time. And oh, that's a nice Ooh, little, little blood star. Another blood star, another kind of derm. I, these are the kind of rocks that you just kind of get overwhelmed with <laughs> the amount of stuff you could find in between all those cracks and crevices. It's almost like, exhausting. The more like, you look, the yeah. more you find. Absolutely. Oh, oh that's look cool. Look at that. A big lingcod. It's a fish that uh, I think there's just a study that came out about how many teeth they call at least 20 teeth a day they're Whoa. replacing in their mouth. And wow. That is a wild I want to know who studied that who had to bad. count ling it was teeth. like a grad student got to count <laughs> thousands of ling cod teeth so cheers to that fun science and better understanding the toothy mouths of our bony fishes uh, this is kind of funny that's a chunk of madrona oh I'm like trying to what figure out this? what kind of sea creature is that what is that thing okay so a piece of wood that down there. But goes to show that any structure serves as habitat, so it's life will cling Yeah, on there's it. a there's a tree that fell and kind of um, lodged next to the Fox Island Bridge that I've been visiting for about four or five years now, and it's kind of interesting to watch it slowly decay and then provide homes for all these animals. Well, no, so it looks like our lovely diver Adam here has their slate. This dive is part of a scuba rockfish survey looking for young of your rockfish. We have this nice pair of scuba buddies here checking in all these tiny cracks for baby rockfish that are less than three centimeters. I mean, three inches. 
Three centimeters would be it's so tiny, tiny and adorable. I want to see a rockfish. Someday, that someday. Um, and yeah. I don't know that that it wasn't found. There's no. there's a tiny rockfish somewhere in there. <laughs> but I, I believe Adam, you know. <laughs> He's the one with the data sheet, so <laughs> count that baby rockfish, Adam. If you're interested in getting involved with that, uh, Harbor Wild Watch would love to train you on how to add a twist of science to your next dive. So you've got to have your me. own scuba certification and all your own gear, but yeah. we can train you on the protocol. Okay, unidentified is swimming object. We'll get back to that more later. But you can just wonder what is okay. falling from the sky, from the water. What's happening there? see a few sponges and other encrusting animals. Yeah, a lot of sponges on top of the scallops. So, um, that's actually, that's like a symbiotic relationship, right? Where the, the yeah. scallop uses the sponge as a form of protection because things like maybe a sea star is not going to want to eat a sponge. Yeah. Pretty un, unappetizing. Nice rockfish there. But yeah, that sponge then gets a nice place to live. And... Well, it might inhibit the growth. I think not getting eaten is, is a pretty is worthy better. trade off. So good team. I'd rather there. wear a little sponge sweater and not be eaten. <laughs> Love that. Oh, look at that fishy. It's definitely not a tuna. <laughs> what kind of fish is that? Uh, okay, I can tell you what it's not. It's, uh, it's sculpin? It's a type probably? of sculpin. And based on its short face and big head and cool looking eyes, it's most likely a buffalo sculpin. It's fun to see the bubbles like that in the distance. I was like, is that rock like breathing? It looks like a reverse, <laughs> uh, like a reverse waterfall. Oh, I like that. And like maybe volcano-esque. Yeah. Those, those are some healthy fish. urchins. They're looking good. Ooh. It's a very pregnant looking rockfish. It's got kind of that round belly. belly. So maybe we don't feel too bad about not seeing so many. There's about to be a bunch of <laughs> yeah. young babies out there. like kind of that stripy scallop. Um, I don't know that there's any good close-ups of the tiny dots that scallops have, but they have eyes. They're cryptic, kind of like this chitin that we're paused on. Yeah, look at that. Chitons are a cool mollusk. They scrape along the ground, eating algae, and there's plenty of algae here. Those like, I love it when you can get the perspective of the green water in the yeah. background. Like, it really gives you the, uh, you know, you understand why the Emerald Sea is a nickname for the Sea. Absolutely. It's more rockfish kind of tucked in these crevices. You can understand why they get their name, <laughs> rockfish. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just a rock. These are, of course, much bigger than those three inches that the survey is looking for, but it's good to know adult rockfish present. Those are two different species there. A copper and a brown, I believe. I'm pretty terrible at rockfish identification because browns, blacks, and what quillbacks all kind of look the same. Pretty similar. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that scallop clothing. All right, so scallop clothing, but also a pretty beefy oh, looking yeah, look crab. Oh yeah, look at the crab. There's actually two, There's crabs, two crabs there. <laughs> They're doing camouflaged. very good the camouflage there. Those crabs often are called spider crabs because of their small carapace and really long limbs. Oh hey there, fishy. That's another one of our sculpin friends. I love those big pectoral fins. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that! Oh, it's a scallop that can swim! It is a swimming scallop. Let's slow that down for one more round here because, oh my gosh, how that delightful is, is that? Very Pac-Man-esque. <laughs> like, it's, it's moving forward towards you. That's probably like the most bizarre, delightful thing I've ever seen underwater is the joy of a swimming scallop is, you know. They're just fantastic. Hard to beat that. And not all scallops can swim, so like rock scallops, they get to be too large and their shell's too heavy, so once they're kind of mature, they stay in one spot, but these swimming scallops can move. Water along. Ooh, look at Maybe that. Maybe they want to come hang out purple. with this beautiful purple sponge. They could swim there if they, they could wanted swim. to. They could put a little purple sponge on their back and <laughs> have a spongy sweater. Yeah. So fashion. So fashionable. I hear purple is the color for the season, so. Okay. 
You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Sponge purple. Another one Another of those. fish. Oh. I love those sculpin because they don't have swim bladders, and so they really just sit. Wow, sit. look at all those scallops. Scallops, another leather star in the corner. Just, yeah. Life all over these rocks. The scallops. And we can totally talk about the eyes of the scallops because that's something that's just totally weird. Uh, they have... All along the margins of their <laughs> yeah. shells, they have these little tiny kind of blue-green dots, and those are their eyes. And they get more eyes the older they get. Incredible. I think it just Ooh. winked at you all. <laughs> Here's another echinoderm. We've got a sea cucumber with its feeding tentacles extended. Yeah. And that's one that I love the scientific name of. Cucumaria. Miniata. Another little crab in the corner. Oh, yeah. Good eyes. I can see that. And of course, a nice rockfish here swimming about. Here, this is one see. where, <gasps> look at that, that, is that funky like a little hair. Crab? Yeah, I think our camera folk missed that, but I would, <laughs> can we go back and look at that more closely? I'm so curious. I want to know. What is this hairy little leg? Yeah, it must be so funny because what your eyes pick up and what the camera sees are, can sometimes be totally different. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, there's a fish there. Hey, there is a fish there. <laughs> Little painted greenling. Nice to see you hiding out under those rocks. Ooh, a Ooh, giant Pacific big barnacle. barnacle. Look at those feet. They're capturing plankton in the water. And being uh, early on in the year, early in the summer, when the day length is just increasing when this video was shot, uh, there's not too much plankton in the water just yet. It's not quite pea soup out there, but there is enough to sustain these filter feeding organisms. Yeah, you can kind of see that as the little specks in the water. Oh, look at that spaghetti worm. Yeah, those long tentacles that somewhat resemble a spaghetti Very noodle. Very stretchy. They make this cool tube out of whatever kind of mud or sediment is around them, sometimes shell debris. And they'll just make this tube and then they can stretch their tentacles out like two feet from that tiny tube. Wild. Very cool. They eat uh, a thing called detritus, which is just kind of a scientific word for stuff. Uh, any sort of organic material. So it could be sea urchin poop or uh, discarded lingcod teeth or, you know, whatever else has a little bit of nutrition. Another, yeah, that barnacle is Big also barnacle. scooping through the water for that Anything they can food find. floating around. Oh, a top snail. They're one of my favorite snails. With their shell perfectly shaped like a little top. Don't spin them though, they get dizzy. Yeah, okay. Very cute. The blood star I saw tucked back there. Yeah. This is wow, Sunrise so Beach Park, definitely has this really nice natural wall that just is a very cool habitat for all sorts of creatures. And it's also very current dependent, so you can see that stuff in the water. It's definitely moving. <laughs> yeah, there is definitely. It's supposed to be a, kind of a tricky dive site. Yeah. Look California at that sponge on those. Oh, yeah, those. the purple sponge. Purple what sponge did we say about everywhere. purple being in? It's so Heck, great. Yeah. These guys got the memo. Working it. You know, I'm a little surprised that there are no anemones here. I didn't expect there would notice. be plumos anemones. Maybe the currents don't bring the anemone larva there. You know. Oh, there's a um, closer. Oh, another, another little. Crab. What is it? It's graceful not a kelp crab. A graceful kelp crab. Yeah. It's not a kelp crab, but it is a kelp crab. But it's not the normal yeah. kelp crab. Oh, hey, fishy <laughs> face. Oh, are you adorable? Look at those big I eyes. I love, like, if I could do my eye makeup with those stripy <laughs> wonders, you probably think I <laughs> was kind of weird. But <laughs> okay. I like it. Yeah. Now, this diver found something here uh, that's camouflaging very well. So, not realizing it's something very, very cool, we're going to go look at this crevice really quick because there's also some nice little. That is a good spot for <laughs> good habitat for things like wolf eels. Yeah. Or those or more secret, fish, yeah, little secret animals sheltering like, from every, all the other predators out there. There's a little kelp perch hanging out, which are very oh, cute. they are very cute. They're very, like, angular. Yeah, definitely I worthy think. of some spotlight, but then, oh, <gasps> that blob <laughs> happened oh, to be. Oh, it's an octopus. <laughs> yes, wow. the world's largest species, the giant Pacific octopus here, just hanging out and about. 
Look at that camouflage, even with the texture and the color. Yeah. Only given away by their movement. <laughs> wow. I'm just gonna go hide back in this hole here now that you've spotted me. <laughs> Peace out. <Girl laughs> just scouts. kidding. I'm out. <laughs> Wow, what a fantastic find. So octopus do eat scallops too, so maybe this one is foraging. I wonder if they're deterred by the sponge as well. Ooh, I wonder. They do a very sensitive touch um, through those suction cups on their arms. Oh, there's our little perch stealing the spotlight for a second. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Octo. What an amazing find. It's pretty neat to, you know, take a close look and see if you can find the eye. And then below the eye, there's the siphon. So kind of this movement of opening and closing. It's that octopus pulling water into the mantle uh, to oxygenate the gills. And octopus have kind of two means of locomotion. They can walk and using their tentacles kind of maneuver around on the Bottom, or they can do jet propulsion by squirting water very quickly through that that siphon hole um, and that kind of propels them backwards backwards forwards okay. head first um, it propels them in a direction <laughs> but away from what's trying to eat them yeah there you go so you know our diver is looking at this Ooh, a fish. that's a cute little oh it's adorable yeah. love friend. those little eel like fish but not a true eel because they have those pectoral fins. But back to the octopus because it is so cool. Look at the texture. Wow. Just incredible. But if this octopus did not want to be here, it would be gone in just a flash. Absolutely. Just zoom away and there would be no keeping up. Divers have some pretty powerful fins, but they're not going to be able to out swim an octopus. Yeah, they're also able to, you know, squeeze themselves into any... Oh yeah, tiny, tiny crevices. Yeah. Plenty of places to hide in this rock. Absolutely. On with the survey. There is more baby rockfish to be looked for. Zeros are important too, of course. But that was a cool, cool find. Very nice encounters. Love to see that. I kind of get excited about all invertebrates, really. But octopus. There's something just There's something magical about, about them. them. Yeah. So. Oh, little fish in the pond. Sometimes you don't see them until you've just moved past them <laughs> and then they move and give themselves away. It's surprisingly pink under there. Yeah, that nice encrusting coral and algae. It really gives this wall kind of a tropical feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that cool. 50 to 45 degree water. Yeah, it's very, Ooh. very cold and not very crystal clear here. More urchins. Wow, look at all of them. I kind of, I'm getting the sense that we've moved to the top of the wall here. So as divers do, they kind of do the deep part of their dive first. And then as their air gets slower, they'll move to a shallower habitat. And so kind of moving to this top of the wall where there's still a surprising amount of urchins. Yeah, a lot of them. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, look at you, this big healthy focus. star. This is Pisaster ochraceus, which also does come in an ochre color. A nice orange. hand for scale, I so <laughs> yeah. appreciate that. This is a beautiful purple variety. Again, showing off that madriporite that we talked about earlier. Echinoderm central on this. Yeah. That's right here. Well, that's oh, cool. Oh, that is cool. Is that a pitic it's clam? A pitic clam. Rough in... pitic right in the rock. In the rock. She has that amazing ability to <laughs> hide in rocks with her <laughs> corkscrew like shell. So Very good. cool. Yeah, pitics are one of the clams that, like, I, I think I only have one pitic shell in my shell collection because they're just so hard to come across because even if the clam dies it's wedged in the rock <gasps> but this is oh hilarious. my goodness okay, look at that speaking of fall fashion this moon snail's <laughs> got it going on <laughs> work it urchin an urchin hat for the season oh there's another moon snail so moon snails <laughs> have like this nice smooth shell and urchins quite often will grab a hold <laughs> of shells trying to you know armor themselves against the waves or against predators and 
if you happen to grab onto a large moon snail, I guess the urchin is going to go for a ride. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, that's pretty silly. Oops. I love seeing these divers because you can get a scale, a sense of scale here with, you know, how big those urchins are. They're yeah. pretty sizable. Oh, here's another cool find. Hanging out by the urchins. This looks like a little oh, octopus. Oh, look at that. My guess would be a little red. We won't know till we yeah, get a closer a little look. red. Octo. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm just... Good find. I'm just an urchin. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, man. That would be cool if they could really, like, I know really they could spike. change the texture of their skin, but, like, yeah. Here, let me go into toothpick form. <laughs> that would be wild, like pufferfish style. Yeah. Oh, oh what a so darling cutie. little thing. I'm glad it's not wearing an urchin hat. Yes, that would be <laughs> probably pretty uncomfortable for the octopus. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, here's kind of our clue that this octopus, you can see underneath the eye, it almost looks like it has eyelashes. Those little tabs are going to oh, be our distinguishing flaps. characteristic for this species. Of course, if it were very large, this is a small species, so it you know doesn't get much larger than maybe a softball or so. But um, the juvenile Pacific octopus, they start out small like this, so it's nice to have a way to tell them apart, those little eyelashes. We get it. <laughs> then you'll know. If you spoke octopus, you could just ask it, but yeah. it's hard to do underwater when you need to breathe. It's a different version of my octopus teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, now we're definitely in an area that gets more sunlight because we're seeing some of these macro algaes. Some sea lettuce. Here's another species of sea star, the mottled star with on its arm, ooh, a nice little scale worm. Cool. Another symbiotic relationship there. Uh, but yeah, that algae is gorgeous. Almost as pretty Lots as Lots of pittocks here now in the different type of substrate. A lot easier to get their clam shell down into this gravel and clay banks than it is a solid rock. I'm also noticing just how short of a window there is to dive this site because you can see that seaweed's starting to move in one direction and the divers are trying to get back to the <laughs> dive going, they're entrance. going, they're swimming upstream! <laughs> yeah. A little hard to kick here. Yeah, the tide <laughs> does change pretty aggressively pretty at this location. Aggressively. Just that moment of slack to swim out easy and then ideally maybe you'd plan it so you could swim back easy, but <laughs> struggle's real. And this is sargassum weed. It's an introduced species that has little tiny floats in it. So the little dots, little balls that you see along the edges of the algae are sargassum floats. They help hold it up into the water column. So it looks very kind of mermaidy. Oh, totally. <laughs> Underwater. This garden. Yeah. And Literally. That's, that's a that's a wrap for this dive here. I think uh, we definitely got to see a lot of cool spots. You can uh wow, what an incredible little splash we just had. I hope you enjoyed your virtual diving experience here with our volunteer divers and of course your biologists with Harbor Wild Watch so fun to get to see this underwater side of things. Um, of course, we will be offering some low tide beach walks this spring and summer at this location. So you'll get a chance to visit Sunrise Beach in person and see the intertidal zone uh, and some of the other animals and plants and algae species that thrive at this beautiful location. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in. And as always, we hope that you learned, learned have fun.